Lonnie Hammerberg, welcome. Please take a moment to introduce yourself to the panel. Hi. Yeah, it's, it's being recorded. Yeah. Hello, hello. Push the button up. Sorry. No. Yeah. I'm Lonnie Hammergan, and I've had an interesting military history, and I'd like to tell you that first, and then I can answer any questions and summarize how I can bring something to the university system that nobody else can. First off, I was the undergraduate of the Air Force School of Aerospace Medicine as a civilian when I was trying to get into the astronaut program. The day of graduation, as the undergraduate, I was drafted in the Army, which was the best thing in the world that could happen to me. Uh, because I got a chance to go to Vietnam, had 100 combat missions in a helicopter as the doctor, bringing people to the mass, not taking them from it. And so, I uh, had a fantastic tour of duty uh, and uh, came back to the Mayo Clinic in the middle of it because Rochester, Minnesota adopted my unit. And it turned up, I ended up in Rochester, Minnesota for my neurosurgery training. After the Army honored me with the request to go to NASA, and I was there for a year in aerospace medicine, flying with the astronauts there during the big fire, realized my vision kept me from being a pilot. And I was criticized once by Channel 3, saying, we're going to do a big expose because we checked with NASA and you're not on their register. Bottom line is that I have had a lot of interesting experiences with veterans organizations, uh, nationally, uh, mainly, uh, and internationally and been involved uh, with the uh, Memorial Wall, which I've traversed the state with. Who had it? You're bad out of time. Oh, yeah. I would love to go out of time. <laughs> uh, I will uh, also probably work into some other things that I would want, would want to say uh, that I have been involved with veterans organizations over the last 30 years in the town. Okay. Dr. Hammer, we'll move to questions. We'll start with Leo. How are you doing? Just fine, Leo. All right. Um, so, uh, you might as well ask the same question I asked the previous uh, folks. Um, what's your opinion uh, in regard to the way that departments have been funded, um, not based upon the needs of the community, but based upon, I don't know, lobbying efforts by those departments? Uh, for example, nursing, get, you know, not getting the you know, budgeting or getting a decrease while dental doesn't, that sort of thing, um, and then also some of the uh, exorbitant salaries that some professors get while others don't, uh, and also for not working very many hours. Well, I'm not sure the question out of that, except that obviously we have uh, had too many uh, uh, people that haven't been pulling their weight as far as uh, teaching has concerned in the uh, upper end of the university system. but. Uh, that is uh, uh, something that has to be handled on that administrative level of the university presidents and faculty uh, and making sure that uh, uh, they are doing the job of teaching. We have big problems. And uh, how, would I, how would I have done it differently? No, I know how I'm, I would suggest doing it differently in the future. Lonnie, the question I have for you is one of the complaints that I get frequently from friends of mine that have attended UNLV is that the majority of the time they're being taught by associate professors, not by the professors themselves because the professors are out doing research or writing books or doing something to try to bring money into the university. How would you go about changing that culture to where, you know, these students are paying good money, they should be being taught by the professor, not always by the associate professor? I think that has to come from the top. And if the, uh, the regents had, may, may, can, can make that suggestion directly to the university presidents to implement this, that's nothing wrong with the Board of Regents saying, hey, we have to do more teaching, less research. You've got to remember, where's the money coming from? Because a lot of the people, it's the research grant to get some money to hire the things for the associate professors and to do the teaching. 
just to clarify, any teaching assistants, not associate professors, associate right. professors at tenured second stage of track. Yes. Anyway, yes. Uh, given the current budget climate and that there cannot be all the money that should be, how do we recruit and continue to recruit during this gap qualified faculties in a way that doesn't leave us with a hole 10 and 20 years down the road? Well, again, uh, one of the solutions that I have is we're going to have to recruit some more outside money. We can't just uh, have the, uh, how do we recruit? Uh, the has to be a job that a person has, not just money, but a real, real job, a real future, okay? And so if we can show a long-term uh, investment in some particular program uh, where the uh, person can grow and do a combination of research so he eventually can become a full professor or qualify for additional grants. So um, I guess there has to be some built-in incentive program within the administration system to say, Here's what's going to happen, here's what you can do, and here's what you can do in the future. Karen? Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Hamilton, and thank you for, for coming in here and speaking with us today. Uh, I'd like to know, can you tell us how many offices you've run for? And um, why? Why? Yeah. Oh, that's easy. To be involved. Uh, and uh, I've run for... Uh, State Board of Education won that race. I have uh, run for, of course, uh, Board of Regents. And then after Board of Regents, then I ran for Lieutenant Governor. And then uh, after four years of Lieutenant Governor, the Governor's job uh, was opening up. And while I didn't have necessarily the resources or the money, uh, at the time uh, there was a discussion between my wife and myself, uh, how many times in your life does the governor's job open up uh, on you and you either have to choose to go for it or not. And I'm a go for it guy, so I <laughs> ran against uh, a lot of money and a lot of other things and uh, they ended up with a very good governor who did a very good job and did a good job for education. Thank you. Travis. Good afternoon. Thanks for being here. Uh, is higher education a bloated bureaucracy? <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> I'm teasing because uh, 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 I, uh, you're talking uh, a question for a, a president and or an administrator. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that too because uh, uh, I'm sure it is at, at some areas and at others, because again, you're talking university, we're talking also community college, we're talking uh, Nevada State College, we're talking a lot of others, in which I think uh, to blanket them all together as uh, too much bureaucracy, uh, I don't think so. They're, they're barely uh, getting by. Now, on the level only of the highest uh, uh, level of the university system, um, uh, how much of that uh, uh, is bloated bureaucracy? I think the uh, regents would have to ask and get the answers from presidents, from a presidential interview for the people who want to be president of Reno, okay? Because uh, uh, I have had a good, sorry, that's, I know you had his hand up. Can I ask a follow-up? Sure. So you, you mentioned earlier you talked about people not pulling their weight. What makes you think there's people not pulling their weight? You mean at the university system? It was your comment. Yeah, right? yes, yes. And uh, uh, only, again, that is often uh, the biggest single criticism that they're not uh, teaching enough classes, not teaching enough uh, directly on the student. And I've, I've heard that criticism for many years. I can accept that. I happen to be lucky. My grandson is graduating from university where they only allow full, pro uh, not full professors, full-time faculty to teach and to uh, 
with PhDs already that they don't have teaching assistants. That's a rare college, and not many can afford to do that. Uh, but that's a well-endowed uh, college in other respects, and that isn't, I don't think, true in any university-type system. Uh, and so uh, I'm sure that there are some people that, could, that aren't pulling their weight uh, that are, uh, we might view that from the outside, but I would also listen to university presidents uh, and have them uh, be the ones that would help and do that, rather than the regent that says you have to cut out this particular president. Now, we have to cut out programs, and we have cut out programs, unfortunately. Uh, the doctorate program in education has been cut at UNLV, which is just sort of stunning uh, that uh, uh, there's no longer, longer a, a doctorate. So there's, but I think he had his hands up, well, he had a, he did uh, follow up. That's just saying you're out of time. Yeah, we have time for <laughs> one more question, if someone has a quick question. Yeah. Well, what would you do about it as a region? Well, okay, no, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do rather than hit me with all these loaded questions because here's a plan. Uh, we were all talking about how to divide up the money. You know, the fact that money north and south and we're 600 million behind UNLV versus UNL. However, they're ignoring the fact that here's a plan uh, to try to get more money. We have to go privately. It's just otherwise we're dividing between north and south and fighting out of the same pot over and over and over again. And here was what I would suggest to go ahead uh, with a plan uh, for an outside stadium to be built, revising a whole area that probably have a new little taxing district, and of course there's a lot of things involved in that as to will they be allowed to have a taxing district. But that's what I'm saying, bring in somebody like Barrick or the company that wants to, uh, uh, I'm getting out of, because <laughs> I'm looking, uh, uh, the, uh, huge investment that the Silverton Casino wanted to build and change all of this area uh, that could be done. I say it could be done. We could be advanced to a new level. We have to get private money from the outside, I guess is my conclusion. So what we should do, yes, we should tax an area, we should build a whole thing. Student housing, uh, commercial things, advance the strip. In fact, the uh, 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 institute, uh, that's why I'm uh, laughing uh, at this because I'm keeping back to uh, talking about. We're, we're actually out of time, Dr. Yeah. yeah. Thank okay. you for being here today. The, the... Thank you for coming. Sure.